Hello, my friends. You're most welcome. This is your Catholic Faith Reloaded, episode number nine. I'm Father Nelson Medina, your host, and this time I'm broadcasting from the Retreat and Conference Center at the Seminary of, of the Immaculate Conception in Long Island. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. And what we do here is to go back to basics, the very basics of our Catholic faith. And we have already, we have already made the journey. We began by asserting that our Catholic faith is based on truth. This is not about imagination. This is not about fantasy. And then we spoke about the revelation of God. You come to know God not like you come to know a micro, this is my constant uh, comparison. Uh, God is not something to be put uh, under the scrutiny of a microscope. Uh, no, no, God, God, you come to know him as in, in a similar way, in a similar way, you come to know your friends. So this is about relationship. And the main relationship of God is with the people of God, which is the people of the Bible. And this is the very importance of the Bible. But last time, in our last episode, we were commenting that the Bible is not, is not disconnected, is not separated from the people of the Bible, which is in the Old Testament is the Jewish people. And in the New Testament is the group of the believers, of the disciples of Jesus Christ under, under the authority and following the teaching of the apostles who were designated by Jesus Christ himself. So the, the new people of God, so to speak, is the church. And the importance of the church is that it is well, she is, now we say in English, she is the living people of God, the living people of God. And the relationship between God and his people has not decreased over time. Uh, God continues to inhabit his, his people. And this is especially true when we think of the pouring of the Holy Spirit, the pouring of the Spirit that made a difference in the hearts of the believers, both ancient and new. Well, that's the point we are at. And now we go, now we go, we, we make a step uh, forward. This is the, we, we are in lesson number two. Um, as many of you probably are very familiar at this point, we are pair using, pair using this wonderful resource that was made publicly available by the Joan of Arc Catholic Parish in Indianapolis. And this is exactly the point we are now. Why don't, uh, look at this question. It's very, very interesting. And probably you have asked this question yourself. Why don't we simply obey the Bible alone? Wow, what a tricky question. What an important question. Bible? To follow the Bible, to obey the Bible, that's all we need. There is expression in the Latin language, which is sola scriptura, sola scriptura. And the meaning of sola scriptura is exactly the scripture alone. And this is a kind of a motto, motto uh, in the Protestant reform because Luther was convinced that he didn't need the church. The church was, was not a requirement, was not needed. We have more than enough with the sola scriptura, with the Bible alone. So this is the important question that we are facing at this point in our journey. Why don't we simply obey the Bible alone? Well, look at this answer. Because the Bible was never meant to contain every detail of our faith. 
Wow, that was very well said. The Bible was never meant to contain every detail of our faith. So, is the Bible central to our faith? No doubt about it. Of course it is. It is central. It is essential. But we are not saying, and we are not going to say, that the Bible alone is enough for our faith. Because the Bible itself never says so. Never. Even you can find some texts in the Bible that are telling you that the Bible is referring to the people of God again, referring to the church, referring to the authority of the church, and consequently, referring to tradition, which is never else, is nothing else, but the very journey, the very act of transmitting faith from generation to generation, the Bible was never meant to contain every detail of our faith. The apostolic letters of the New Testament, for example, were written to particular churches to address particular circumstances when the apostles themselves could not be present in person. Now, those letters speak to universal truths which apply to the whole church but they are not exhaustive collections of church dogma. This is so beautiful and so important. They are not exhaustive collections of church dogma. Christ himself gave his own authority to his apostles to teach the truth in his name, to govern the church and to make people holy by forgiving their sins and celebrating the sacraments. So our faith is not what you can take, you yourself and you by yourself, can take from a book. The book is important because it's the permanent reference of the essentials of our faith. But never it was meant to contain every detail of our faith because life cannot be contained in any book. In any book, life is flowing. There are constant references to the church, to the Bible, I mean. Constant references to the Bible. And there are limits, of course. We are not reinventing faith every generation. We have a constant and solid reference, a solid foundation in the Bible. And we said that in some of the programs before this one. The Catholic Church existed 400 years before the Bible was assembled into one volume, volume as we know it today. So this is the proof. We don't need any additional truth, proof. This is exactly the proof that it is the Church that make that makes possible that book, which is the Bible. And at the same time, it is the Bible, the one that contains the essentials of Catholic faith. So there is a relationship between the living people of God and the permanent testimony of the Bible. There were many books of the Bible circulating around the world and several false books which claimed to teach the truth, but were false and misleading. The bishops of the church, using the authority given them from the apostle by Jesus himself, determined which books were truly God's words and which were not. And we repeat ourselves, the complete Bible as we know it was put together by the Catholic Church as a collection of 73 books in the year 401 AD. This is the important, this is the relevant connection 
between the book and the people of God. The church lives from the testimony of the Bible, but the Bible was never meant to contain every detail of our Catholic faith. So, next time, we will continue referring to tradition, tradition, which is the act. It's not the thing. It is the act of transmitting faith from generation to generation. Thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you today and tomorrow and forever. Amen.